Happy Thanksgiving. I'm wearing a fancy shirt. It's Kevin oh, Kelly, Rick Uccino, SP3, uh, and we are inside Cradle. All right. We're inside your conducting. We're inside your, your apple pie, your pumpkin pie, whatever you're putting in your face today and putting calories on your waist. We're talking about it. We're talking about what we're thankful for in the wrestling year 2021. It's the inside cradle, a deeper dive. Mmm. Feel those calories. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Kev, I don't know about you. I always feel the calories. You always feel the calories? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Uh, this is a pre-taped edition. I uh, hope you're having a great holiday weekend, enjoying an extended break from everything here. It's been a very, very busy time. I know Thank it's busy God for all NFL of us. NFL slate sucks today, so people can actually, like, <laughs> we have a chance for like people to actually, like, watch this. <laughs> yes. Hopefully the Bears and the Tigers are blowing them out. Just screw this. Well, I, I can't tigers? even cover the spread. I'm going to watch Inside Cradle. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch us talk about food for 30 minutes. Yes, we will talk food today. Uh, we're going to completely deviate from wrestling for a little bit and chat about food. We'll also cover some other things. Silas Young, who is fresh off a, a televised wrestling contract and hitting the open market. He will be on pay-per-view with Fight TV this Friday with uh, with a great show, AAW, Windy City Classic. Uh, in all clarity, I will be working the show, so that's why we booked this interview. Uh, and we have plenty to talk about with him. Always uh, putting yourself over, you son of a bitch. Rick, you never do that? No, never. He always no. does that. I have never put myself over, ever. If you're looking for more fun, we had a whole bunch of it uh, before Survivor Series. We had our four-on-four -four Survivor Series elimination We don't need to match. talk about that. Yes, we, we do. We do no, need to talk about that. We really don't. I, I agree, Kev. We do need to talk about that. <laughs> if you want more stuff to watch this wrestling, we got it for you. It's on our YouTube channel. This is a hilarious hang. This is quite the hang. And I just want to do one uh, next time I do one of these. I'm definitely gonna drink. So the, 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 what I was doing was like, I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not drinking a beer. This feels like I should have been having a beer. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, there's a lot as we get near the end of 2021, and we look forward. WWE's gonna be hitting stadiums. AEWs are really, really hitting a stride here. Um, there's some bumpy, bad things with wrestling, but I, I think it's so easy to be negative as Wait, i always say i always yeah. try and like find the things i think i find i would rather talk about what i like more than what i don't like i think we burn calories so in terms of us putting on calories let's let's in, let's ingest some more good things in wrestling what are a few things that you guys are thankful for in wrestling in 2021 i got mine but what about you guys Sid, you want to start us off there um, in 2021, I am very thankful that wrestling has fans back in attendance. Yes. Because number one, number one thing. It, absolutely, because that was it was hollow for a while. I mean, I think that WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, excuse me, uh, Impact Wrestling, all those promotions uh, did their best to do to you know make the the best out of the worst situation possible and they provided a year's worth of great professional wrestling for us to enjoy but it was missing something not having that immediate response from the audience i know it was missing for the performers as you know i talked to a few and they all said the same thing and it was missing for us who was watching it via you know tv so to have that experience back, to be able to go to wrestling events the past two weekends, it's something that I'm very, very thankful and gracious for. Cannot say that enough, uh, yeah. Sid. Cannot say that enough. It was, I mean, everyone is critical of WWE and the Thunderdome. I thought it was a fine adaption considering the times. You know, they took, they went and spent a lot of money to try and recreate the live experience as much as they could with taking as minimal risks for live crowds. You know, they tried to do the thing in, in a controlled space down in Florida and then adapt that and, and go out. And you saw what Ring of Honor did with no fans whatsoever, what AEW did uh, at Daly's Place, where they wanted as many fans as they could possibly get. You know, different areas, different folks, different strokes, uh, but germs are still in the air, right? Um, now we're on this post-fax world of wrestling. Uh, Rick, your take. Um, kind of branching off of what uh, Sid did. There, there's a couple things to be thankful for and tied with that because there is a downside to having fans back and, and one of them that we saw was was this monday uh when uh, a guy who clearly has some issues with himself uh speared seth rollins somehow got a full sprint going 
and Goldberg tackled Seth Rollins on live TV in front of thousands of fans and uh, and 1.5 million people or 1.6 million people watching at home. So thankfully, uh, Seth Rollins was okay after that incident, and he was uh, able to handle it like a professional, get the guy down until security mm -hmm. was there, and everything was handled great. I thought Seth Rollins was a total pro there. So thankfully, uh, I am thankful that he is okay because you never know, you know, what what some of these people. Are, are capable of nowadays and it also and if anybody who has seen his uh his post his instagram post afterwards i am very very thankful especially with the uh tag me in uh program and everything that there is a light that is being shined uh on the mental health crisis not only in the professional wrestling world but just everywhere uh globally yeah. i am somebody uh i'm i'm very open and honest as in, in saying that i am not right in the head like i have severe mental health uh, problems, depression. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I've never been self-confident with myself. I'm an overthinker, uh, 99 problems in my life and 98 of them have been created in my head. Uh, I live in my own world and it is a constant struggle every single day. Uh, and I did not get into a, uh, into the right, uh, career path, uh, for me, because now I'm having to fight that in a public sense. Uh, so I, I'm really, really thankful that, you know, I'm not the only one who goes through that kind of stuff. And it's getting more and more uh, easy and acceptable to talk about that in an in an open forum and the and the tag me in uh, movement or program or whatever you want to call that. Uh, I'm really thankful that that kind of stuff is is coming to light. And I'm not alone in the world. We don't have to shine much more light on it. So we've kind of covered it distinctly and it does feel weird to bring so much of it yeah 24 year old man uh who clearly had some issues that were displayed online that are disturbing uh addressing people in character you know all these different things that have been seen online and i don't want to bring too much i don't even want to say his name because i think you add a little need more, to. Uh, some unnecessary scrutiny would be added to his name uh he's going to deal with some legal ramifications of this but there's some other problems with this when we talk about the mental health issue which is there right we have the same issue this year in all elite wrestling where this happened on television where Chris Jericho well, had to deal with this situation like this uh, and MJF. And yeah, that fan saying oh, I do this because of this person said this uh, apparently this person on Monday at raw was catfished somehow uh, and was dealing with someone in a fake social media account and thought, you know, was uh, vulnerable mentally. You know, I, I would, I would say, what do you think here are the security issues here? How do you, can you even begin to screen this stuff? I uh, no, it's not something that they can yeah. screen beforehand before someone. No, like, I mean, like, how uh, do you? We don't know. A ticket. I think that. I mean, it's just about security. I think the Barclays yeah. security was very last, uh, and this is something that they've become known for now. Yeah. Of the Bret Hart situation in 2019, and then you got this situation. It's it's a issue of security. Barclays Center is now getting known for this. So they need to re-up their security, know that you're in Brooklyn. And some of this stuff usually does happen. Being a New Yorker and someone who uh, is not from Brooklyn and I don't claim Brooklyn, I can tell you <laughs> that sometimes when, you, when, the, when it says the person is from Brooklyn, New Yorkers are just going to look at that like – you know what? That makes sense. That that that's what I that that was my reaction to it. You know, Sid, following it, up on this, we'll get to what we're thankful for. We're not thankful for this situation, right? No. We'll go to a thankful one here in a minute. Um, but did you talk to anyone who attended the show on Monday night? What was the insight from people there in the crowd? Because I know you were at Survivor Series on Sunday. Yeah, I, I mean, the what people told me from the crowd is that there was a lot of anger from certain fans. Like there was other fans that kind of got um, basically reprimanded by security because they were upset with the person that was doing that. Um, they got a loud a hole chant on their way out of the building, and it was a very chaotic chaotic uh scene afterwards what was going on off camera while you know raw ran backstage segments or went to commercial it was a lot of chaos going on from the people that was there that told me so i, I yeah like you said i don't want to shine a light on this any further all i will say is that i have two is two things to learn from this fans Stay on your side of the barricade. Do not yep. jump over the barricade. The performers are there to give you an entertaining night of professional wrestling. They're not there for you to bum rush. They're not there for you to do any of that. And two, if you get catfished by a Seth Rollins account, call Neve and Cammy on MTV. You get some camera shine. You get your 15 minutes of fame, and you don't wind up in jail.
Yeah, see, here's the thing, guys. If you think that you are talking to a WWE superstar online, you're not. You're, I'm sorry, you're not. You're, you're just not. Unless it's a verified Twitter or Instagram account, I'm sorry, you're not. You're being punked. Stop. Don't be that guy or girl. I'll tell you something I'm thankful for in wrestling. Uh, I'm thankful for the competition. I'm thankful for where all wrestling has put itself, and, and it and it's forced some things that WWE has been wanting to do for a while. Some of those things have been unfortunate, uh, but it has forced WWE to do some changes that we haven't really seen like fully play out yet. But I think they're more long game changes. Let's focus on younger talent. Let's focus on doing something different with NXT. And I think the long game on NXT hopefully will pay out. We don't know yet. But they rebooted the brand. Trying to do some different things with it. I'm not saying the jury's out on it just yet, but they're trying. They're gonna do so, and we're going to see what that's like at War Games. Uh, and all the wrestling has lit a fire under WWE's ass. Vice versa, WWE's going to run stadiums, and it's going to, it's going to, it's going to. What is it going to make AEW look like? Are we going to have to run stadiums now? It's a fun, fun. time to be a wrestling fan, uh, and I like the idea of being in the middle of it where I don't have to pick a side. Uh, I win. I win with whatever I want to go and watch and whatever I want to spend my money on. And I think that's an important thing there. Unless you get paid to cover it like us, you don't have to watch everything. Don't feel obligated to watch. You can watch every... us and we'll tell you what happened and you're, you're covered. Yeah, yeah I, seriously, I get it. Guys, yeah. there's too many. Go out and live your lives. There's too much wrestling on every night of the week almost. You know, to, to be a hardcore fan, pick what you like. Go out and, you know, go to a ball game with your kids. Watch a movie, something. Netflix and chill. I don't care, man, but you don't have to watch it. If you're not enjoying what you're watching, don't watch the crap. Just come and listen to us and we'll tell you how bad it was. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're here to tell you how bad or good it was. Um, yeah, to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, Kev, I would say I'm thankful for the opportunity for choice. Uh, mm -hmm. When I started doing like wrestling podcasts, I I learned that, you know, not a lot of wrestling podcasts focused on all the other wrestling throughout the world. That was like the purpose why I created True Hill Heat. But now in 2021, it's a different landscape where people know they have other choices out there. You don't enjoy WWE. Maybe there's something in AEW for you to enjoy. You don't like WWE or AEW. Watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. You don't like New Japan or AEW or WWE. Watch Impact Wrestling. If you don't like any of those, go to your local independence and support them so there's different choices all throughout the world no matter where you are in the world you can be in india in china there's going to be wrestling out there for you to enjoy so the the fact that wrestling has so much choice for you know fans and you know people like us that uh, you know talk about it it's a great time for professional wrestling and the business is healthier than it's it has been in the past 20 years in my opinion uh, something thing. else i'm uh go ahead rick i didn't mean uh, to cut you uh, off no 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 yeah if you were gonna dive into one go ahead uh another thing i'm thankful for is the idea that wrestling has adapted now as a business in the sense of the streaming deals which we saw kind of come through this year i know people don't love wwe's arrangement with peacock nbc universal's peacock but it does do something else and we saw this in 2019 2020 and it's definitely now a permanent thing the price of WWE and on-demand libraries, and now All Elite Wrestling will be in that game sometime soon, is going up. The idea of a set audience that can provide subscribers to a mainstream media company's gate window streaming service is now going to make wrestling, if you have a portfolio of content, suddenly more lucrative than it's ever been. And it is Reaganomics and wrestling. AEW got a TV contract because WWE signed $2 billion deals in four months with two major media companies. It's, it's, it opens up the market. And I wonder uh, how, how much that market will open up. Did it shrink because of the pandemic a little bit? Probably, you know, um, but it's still there as a valid thing. Peacock, it's a billion dollar investment. Uh, WWE will have some deals come up at near the end of 2022 for television. I do think those deals will get renewed. Maybe they'll get renewed somewhere else. Maybe they'll get a new deal somewhere else. Um, but I do think the price and the business of wrestling on television is still very, very strong. And I do, I do like the idea. It's evolved past the idea of it's not as what it was uh, in the attitude era because nothing in television was. Nothing in television is watched the same way it was 20 years ago. 
Uh, and I do think wrestling has adapted the right way of playing the demographics, all these different things. I'm thankful for that. The business of wrestling, media wise, is pretty is pretty strong. I want to focus on a few superstars here that I'm that I'm thankful for this year. First, Hit it up. First and foremost, you you guys had to know this was coming. I'm thankful Becky Lynch is back. Hell yeah. Uh, that was a a very very uh, long time for me. Instead, you can roll your eyes, but this is uh, somebody that I've been a fan of and somebody that I've admired for a long time, and somebody that I've also said that I would not be here doing what I'm doing without her. Uh, again, that's a kind of a, a mental health thing there, and I'll uh, I'll I'll explain the story one day. Uh, preferably to her uh but uh I'm, I'm happy she's back she's one of the best damn performers on the planet i know they're trying to force this heel turn down you know everybody's throats and it's it's not really working for a lot of people but i just i just enjoy getting to watch her work every week and not only that but what it means for the women's division because she is somebody that's not gonna put up with a whole lot of crap she's somebody that's gonna fight for the other talent uh, on the roster case in point her promo this past monday where she tore down the brooklyn audience by saying oh yeah you guys love these people this that, and the other thing then why were you chanting for cm punk and doing the damn wave uh during the women's tag match now a lot of that has to do with bad booking and you know we could go off on that all day but today's yeah. not the show for that um i'm happy becky's back she always puts over her opponents she's going to do everything she can to make Liv morgan look great just like she's done for oscar or anybody else uh in the past so i'm 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 ecstatic that she's back and i get to watch her work every week and honestly i'm thankful for other people getting the opportunity in the spotlight this year the nikki crosses of the world who got to win her first women's championship bianca belair who got to win her first women's championship praise jesus Big E finally winning the wwe championship Britt baker over in aew uh getting to shine the light on some people who have busted their ass for years and they finally got their moments in the sun this year i was really really thankful for all those cool moments sid who are you thankful for in wrestling this year I am thankful for uh, representation in wrestling overall. When you look at the landscape, whether it be in WWE, like Rick said, Big E winning the WWE Championship, uh, Xavier Woods winning the King of the Ring, uh, Zelina Vega winning the Queen's Crown Tournament, uh, Bianca Belair and the fabulous year she's had, Sasha Banks still one of the top stars. You look over in AEW, they just signed Jay Lethal, who's been tearing it up for the past two decades decades, whether it, you know, it be on the independence or in TNA, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Nyla Rose, uh, Lee Moriarty. Uh, you look at Impact Wrestling, Rich Swan, Moose have both been uh, Impact World Champions in the past year. You look at the independent scene, you got AJ Gray, and you got so much talent of people of color. And it's not just African Americans like myself. You got Thunder Rosa, who's doing amazing things. Probably the person or uh, wrestler I'm most thankful for this this year because she has really put a spotlight on women's professional wrestling for the future with her with her promotion mission pro wrestling that has given a platform for so many women's wrestlers that on the independent scene that don't have a lot of places for them to work mission pro wrestling has been providing that and what she's done in aew and elevating their women's division has been amazing lucha bros doing their thing as well you got the mysterios in uh, wwe so to see so much representation from the african americans from the hispanics from uh latinos from uh, the Joshis like Hakara Shida or Asuka or Io Shirai is just so much talent and it proves that wrestling whether it's be the wrestlers or the fans it's not just one color it's not just one uh, gender it's not just one race wrestling is for everybody and that representation allows that to flourish and forward more one person that both of us forgot to mention that I think is very important to bring up Bobby Lashley hell yeah. yes yes what a year for Bobby well deserved. Guys Forty-four been years old wins his first so WWE long. championship. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, and also good on WWE for making him look like a monster. You know, they 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 he settled in freaking monster. This it, it shouldn't be that hard. I know, but there was many times where they did some other things with him. They were more personality driven, or you know, he was in a group. You know, and and they did a, a bunch of different things with him this year, which some of it questionable. Breaking up the hurt business was odd, but they made him look like a million dollars. He played his part. He has the body of work. There's a 44 year old man that looks like that. All looks right. Like and, and, and what incredible. looks like he's 24. It's incredible. Yeah, incredible. It's like, absolutely incredible. Uh, a guy who 100% earned this opportunity ran with it. And I think can still do some big things and, and, and it still has a great body work. 
someone I'm thankful for is someone we've talked to quite a bit. And maybe I think coming out of the pandemic, we kind of forget going back. We're in front of fans again. It's a different thing. People kind of take for granted that 2020 into 2021 was a challenging time. And there were a handful of players that are not act active on television right now that I don't think get their, their due. And a handful of them include Bailey, who I think was a critical reason why WWE was able to do things in Thunderdome where she understood the silence needs to be filled. I need to yeah. keep the, 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 my body is a motor, but so is my mouth and I need to keep it working. Oscar did that where you're talking about somebody who has English as a second language and is eating up the screen with her physicality and her charisma. And, and then to, you know, pay on to that was Drew McIntyre. This is a guy who had to win the world title. Uh, he won the Royal Rumble. He's supposed to be the, getting his christened chosen one moment and fulfill everything he was supposed to do. And his first run when he was a younger, slightly more immature version of himself goes away from WWE, refines himself, comes back, gets to be Brock Lesnar in a soundstage in front of Noah. Yeah. And uh, it may be a 2020 thing, but really this whole last year and a half feels like it's, it's one year. It We're like now 10. finally going to be back to a real WrestleMania in 2022. And I think one of the best moments was in that soundstage in front of no one and him just suddenly putting that hand out saying like, yeah. we're going to be connected. We're going to figure this thing out. We're gonna be and okay. I thought, I thought that was a beautiful moment. We've been able to talk to him a lot and I'm very, very thankful for the access that we've gotten to him. And he's such a humble guy, even though, yeah. you know, I was at the top. So naturally I got to go down, you know, and, and he has such a grace about him that, a lot of people in wrestling, it's hard to maintain that because you want to just be in the top spot. And uh, he's a very, very smart guy who completely understands uh, the long-term game and, and a lot more maturity in him this time around the past years. Very thankful for those three people in WWE. And I think we got to talk about this, the return of CM Well, hang Punk. on. Before, before we, uh, before we uh, go into that one, I know Sid is on a, on a, on a timer here. He's got to run. Uh, we appreciate Sid uh, you, you joining us. Thank you, sir. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Check him out on True Heel Heat. Uh, a bunch of great content. Hopefully, one of these days we can beat him in a trivia match down the line. But I, I think I think he thinks that isn't going to happen. He's going to stay undefeated. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to you, Kev. Happy Thanksgiving to Rick. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone watching. Keep watching Inside Cradle and the Sports Keto Wrestling YouTube channel. I got a couple of great interviews with Queen, uh, Queen Zelina, King Woods, Jeff Hardy, and Shayna Baszler, Rhea Ripley, and Reggie up on the channel right now. So subscribe for more. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sid. Didn't mean to ramble you out there, but appreciate no it. A lot of great work in New York this weekend, too, man. Thank right, you. We'll man. see you soon, buddy. Take care. Take um, but no, I gotta talk about it. CM Punk. Well, yeah. This was yeah, this was an incredible moment. We'll get into our moments of the year in about a month and a half or so and talk about our, our best of things. This is when you start to have those conversations, right? Um, I think it's gonna be hard pressed to say what that this wasn't the promo of the year, that this wasn't the segment, the non-wrestling segment of the year. I was there, 22,000 people, 22,000 people bought a ticket on a rumor, not on an advertised name, but a rumor. Mm -hmm. And that music hit and you could, that place could have floated off of Madison Avenue and into Lake Michigan if it wanted to. Uh, it was absolutely special. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, that's, <coughs> that's something that we didn't ever think we were going to get. You know, we we never thought that it was it was ever going to happen. And I think when he came back and started doing WWE backstage, I think we all kind of got this this feeling that, OK, maybe he's starting to dip his toe back in there. The, mm -hmm. the, the relationship has kind of uh, maybe it's starting to heal. Maybe that bridge is starting. And to be I, I definitely get the impression that WWE wanted him back in the ring. Oh, of course they, he did. And he said that, you know, WWE you know, negotiated with him as well. And he kind of gave credit to Renee young for pulling him back into wrestling because he said, look, when I got, if she didn't talk me into backstage, I'm, I'm probably not in AEW right now. So yeah, that obviously kind of rekindled his interest and, and kind of relit that fire for him a little bit. I, I, I don't know if he ever would have resigned with WWE ultimately, but again, the the uh, emergence and the evolution of AEW and, and the rise that they had um, and them doing business the, the right way in CM Punk's eyes over, you know, 18 months or so finally got him to like, all right, let's go. 
And now he's here, and pretty soon we're getting uh, – heck, we we'll, we might get it tonight. You know, of course, we're recording this at 3 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. This isn't going to air until <laughs> Thanksgiving Day. Uh, so we might get it tonight on Dynamite. MJF and, and CM Punk squaring off on a microphone. I am damn thankful that we're going to get to see that. Uh, so, yeah, man. Yeah, it, it's great to have CM Punk back in professional wrestling. It's great to have AJ Lee back in professional wrestling as well. I'm thankful that she's there. Uh, she's uh, relaunching uh, – a major component in relaunching WOW. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's a great time to be a professional wrestling fan. I know there's a lot of negativity and a lot of bad things that have happened over the last two years or so. Uh, but it, 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 it's still good to be a wrestling fan right now and to be in wrestling media. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, you know, we got this show. I'm thankful for our friends in India. I'm thankful for Roni, Aranava, Anirban, Cybershek, Avaroth. We have a lot of great people that I'm mentioning there by name that you never see on screen who are critically important to what we do in the back end of everything we do. Um, uh, this isn't a brag or a boast. It's a humble brag. I, I, I put my voice on a video. You did it a handful of times and we send it off and we get these wonderful like montages that are cut together so perfectly that look like internet gold yeah. and, and they pop up on our screens and our voices are on them and they're crafted so well. And, they boost up everything we do and it has these wonderful images to it. And my face is edited on the Hulk Hogan and I'm doing <laughs> silly voices and ridiculous stuff. I would do with my friends as a kid is now my job. And, and you watching this is the most thing is the thing I'm most important and most thankful for is uh, we all had a very, very challenging year. I got laid off at the beginning of the year. You and I talked about this. I knew I was going to get laid off for months. I worked at another wrestling website that fell through. And for two weeks, I didn't know it was going to happen. And then Jose Gonzalez calls me up in Florida. And he says, hey, are you on the market? Uh, yeah. In three days. It's like, well, can we just put you on a temporary deal and get you going for WrestleMania? And then we'll figure things out. I was like, so I'm working for you guys again? They're like, you will. <laughs> and I remember having my first conversation with you. Like, yeah, you're going to work here. And I was like, I don't know. It's just a temp thing. I was trying to be. I, I, I'll never so forget. Like, it. I'm sitting at a hotel room in Tampa. And we're trying to figure out, you know, the post show and everything, because uh, you know we 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 plan things out months and ahead. I literally um, started the week of Mania, which was crazy. Yeah, I know. And and they're like, well, we're gonna have Kev doing this, that, and that. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? What what, what the hell is? <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, all right, yeah, sure, he can control the chat and whatever. All right, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're cool. Uh, you know, and that's the other thing, man. And that's that's the the last one that I wanted to talk about is that, and I kind of put this out on my Twitter. Um, right after that survivor series show when i got a screen grab of everybody who was on that show i have it's ever since i started the wrestling beat about three years ago going on four years now i have met a lot of really cool a lot of really awesome people uh that you know enjoy the same stuff as me that live and breathe this stuff i don't have a lot of like when i talk about my, my friends growing up like the dudes I hang out and go grab a beer with i have like one guy who watches wrestling and he hasn't watched it since i since we stopped living together when I met my wife. Uh, so it's like, I'll drag him to shows. And then it's like, well, I got to explain. I got to catch him up on like four years worth of booking. Um, this guy's the bad guy. This guy's a good guy. Uh, he's not a bad guy anymore. Actually, he's really cool. You hated him, but he's actually really freaking awesome. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many of those conversations I've had to had with this man. So to meet so many cool people who do incredible work that I, I admire and I aspire to be like, uh, you know, people like Sean Ross, people like Denise Salcedo and John Alba. And and anybody else out there, everybody on the SK staff that I've gotten to meet over the last three years, it's it, it's been a really, really cool thing, especially a guy like Sid, who we had on the show, who I think is one of the most knowledgeable journalists that nobody knows about that they, everybody should know about. Um, it, it's just been a, a pleasure to get to meet and work with uh, with so many great people. Rick, I'm thankful for you doing this Aww. little show with me. You and I uh bitter from radio and, and, and then we get to blow off some steam doing this. <laughs> uh, we scream uh, a lot on this show. We do. And it's good. A lot. It's very and, um, and and also, I want want to say this. This isn't this isn't a brag thing. I'm, I'm, I want people to know this isn't about me. This is about how people make me feel. Uh, and and so there's a lot of people who watch everything we do. And I'm not saying we're the biggest. We're not going to be. You have a lot of choices for this, right? A lot of um, but there's James Espanto, who I can yell at his name and roll the R, and everyone knows who I'm talking about. If they're a diehard fan of the show. It reminds me of the radio that I grew up and I wanted to make. And now I got, we got regular 
viewers. We got regular callers. We got long time, long time watcher, first time commenter. You know, long time listener, first time caller. Um, and that what I want to do is what I wanted to do as a kid, I get to do now as a living. And there's many, many times where I'm bitching about, Oh, I didn't get enough sleep and I'm working on this and this program sucks. Um, and then, I, but then there's nights when we're goofing around before survivor series and after, and I'm in a room and I just ate pizza and I told some jokes in the room opposite it. I walk in here. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do a podcast now. And uh, a year ago, I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent. Yeah. So, uh, and 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 on top of it, I'm not doing a job I don't feel passionate about. So, uh, I hope you guys get that same satisfaction from what you do in life. And I and um, it's and, and so it's so easy to get messed up in it, you know. Yeah. And here's the thing: like this, this job is frustrating at times. This job is is, is annoying at times. I mean, y- you wouldn't think it, but when I was talking about earlier about there being so much wrestling and you don't don't feel obligated, you have to watch all of it. Yeah, it's kind of a struggle. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. there are times where I'm sitting here like, damn it, do I really have to watch Raw tonight? Do I really have to watch Dynamite tonight? And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, and there's there's this little voice that goes off in the back of my head going, dumbass, you get paid to talk about wrestling. What the fuck are you complaining about? <laughs> exactly. But it is it is a lot. It's it, it's boggling down. And when, you know, you're in a situation like, like myself where I have multiple jobs and I have two young kids and a wife and, you know, a family that went through a lot this year. You like there's just a point where I get on a eight o'clock on a Monday night. I want to just sit down, relax and not have to analyze anything. I just want to turn on Deadpool and just not think for 90 minutes. You know, I need like, to watch Deadpool, too. You just reminded me I got to sit in my queue and I haven't watched it because I got to watch wrestling. Hawkeye just came out today. I want to go upstairs right now and, and watch the first two episodes. But I can't because I got to record this article. We got to talk about thanksgiving side dishes in a couple of minutes like there, there's, let's there's, get into side dishes can we get into side dishes wait a minute you mean the royal yumble, yumble! <laughs> the royal yumble was a stupid stupid thing i did at a certain zone uh, a while ago and this started with shout out to robert de felice bobby de felice sweet 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 sweet, sweet bobby and we were doing a, a goofy thing with my buddy ross berman and i don't know someone got mad and they commented rick about how you know what I don't like? I don't like how they made Dolph Ziggler dress up like the Kentucky Fried Girl, and they made him dry, like sell fast food chicken. I was like, no, I loved it. I thought it was wonderful. It was so goofy and fun. Yes, let's have more chickens in the ring taking elbow drops. This is great. And I, I remember I when they had idea. Becky Lynch dress up as the the, the Colonel. Yes, they did. <laughs> uh, and right. and they did a bunch of goofy stuff with it. And that became uh, we made a video game royal rumble uh, of just fast food mascots and food mascots uh and i don't know if that's something we're gonna do again uh but but it became the royal yumble and people and then we got into an argument about all the different characters that could be in it and uh delightful ross berman joked about how well the hamburger steals burgers because (laughs) the burgers are his money (laughs) <laughs> it just became this ridiculous thing and we had a coked up bear we had the coca-cola bear because he's all coked up and just all these silly inside jokes that only the people that watch everything we do are going to be on board with there's be a ton of people who just want to watch the hot topics and jump in this is a show clearly for the people who watch everything we do we've been talking about ourselves for 20 minutes right um uh, but uh i i love this though i'm okay with it because we're going to be back into the hot topics and Who's on the free market? All these different things. You've been talking to somebody who's been doing wrestling for 20 years, living that life in and out of the ring. Silas Young. All right. Uh, fresh out of a deal with uh, ROH. You're going to be talking to us here in a little bit. And more about his time in WWE and what's going on with AAW. But let's talk foo, baby. Let's yeah. get into some dishes. This is, this is actually a, a debate that I had at my other job. I was, I was doing the morning shift this morning at 700 WLW. And literally somebody brought this up. Uh, which is why I text you and I said, I, I, I got to talk about this because there are people here who are just pissing me off uh, with these freaking food choices that they I'm going to piss off. you off real hard, dude. <laughs> All right, I'm so, going to make you really, really mad. So this is a debate. This is a debate that everybody's had. Everybody's putting that that poll out there. And I think it's just going to be therapeutic to talk about it because it, it's very I find it very interesting. People's side dish choices like there's a lot right there. You wouldn't think there's that many side dishes, but. If anybody who has a mom like mine who cooks for a small army, even though she's only feeding six people, like there's a lot. My mom fills her entire counter 
with food and it's like okay i'll take a spoonful of that and a spoonful of that and oh shit my plate's full up uh so you know it's like i didn't even get the damn turkey out yet so <laughs> we are going to rank the top five thanksgiving side dishes for each of us we'll start at five we'll work our way up five being the one that if there's room it's on the plate if not you know we'll move on to number four and then number one that's the the first spoon you grab and you chuck a big old freaking slab of that mother trucker down Can on we include plate. desserts or, do, or is desserts on the on the table oh uh, sure why not if you have a hard time coming up with five to be completely honest with you i'm gonna leave desserts off of my list because again but desserts I are the thing i'm most pies. excited for well everybody is man yeah we, we could do a whole ranking on pies to be completely honest with you <laughs> everything from i defeats cake every day with one exception cheesecake which is technically a pie, pie. based yeah it, it's, it it's feels like a pie. A pie. if quiche is a pie all oh. right cheesecake is a pie all right che- quiche, quiche is if like the pie. sea threw up and called it a pie that's what the, the quiche is it egg looks pie like it, it, you have to make a good quiche which i can make a good quiche do you want me to make you a good quiche Kevin? sports quiche thank you for turning into sports <laughs> quiche wrestling uh when you, you laugh something. too much at that you yeah. gave that you gave that more than it deserved <laughs> i i i'm a dad i laugh at all right things. number five number five for me little outside of the box and by the way we're not including turkey everybody eats turkey everybody eats ham turkey's could, a given we could have the white meat dark meat debate i can't have really ham on to. here it's ham a side dish for you ham uh, abs- if, if turkey is the main dish ham is side oh okay all right well that's fine you can you can do what you do I, i'm more of a ham at christmas kind of guy okay uh so i'll take the turkey leg give me all the dark meat every day i'm actually mm-hmm. in a family where a lot of people like white meat better so i'm like sweet give me the thighs give me the wings give me all that stuff so load it up with dark meat and then out of the box pretzel roll Ooh, the the creme underrated creme. Un, you know under you were really looking at the game you're a football yeah. player you're really looking at the full yeah. spectrum of your team here you're yeah. right bread is important Gotta bread is up. important but the creme de la creme of breads is the pretzel roll i could eat 30 of these mother truckers they are just the perfect fall bun beautifully browned crisp on the outside fluffy on the inside they got that, 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 mm-hmm. that pretzel texture soft pretzel roll with the, the crunchy brown exterior dip those mfers right in some mashed potatoes oh number five on my list for sure the pretzel roll the pretzel roll i'm gonna go i know this is lame all right i have the illusion of health you see me constantly eating fast food before we do shows right <laughs> um but i genuinely love roasted carrots like roasted carrots and garlic i love them i love them love them love them i love a good roasted celery i like the crunch of it feels nice like i will tell myself i'm eating healthy if i have a veggie chip which is just a potato chip right it's the same fried thing Uh, but i'm a sucker for a good roasted parmesan vegetable garlic vegetable there will not be a vegetable, traditional vegetable, that touches my, my Thanksgiving plate. Uh, we will excuse- deviate on potatoes. Oh, uh, probably, yeah. I I may have multiple spuds, uh, in my uh, in my top five. But that oh, okay, I I can. It's not the most egregious thing that anybody has ever thrown down on a Thanksgiving plate whatsoever. But number four for me, again, branching off of the the pretzel roll, I mentioned it already. Something that I will dip those truckers in go to freaking town it's mashed potato and gravy it's mashed potatoes and gravy and there is a specific way to make the mashed potatoes skin on lumpy mashed potatoes i don't need the i don't need it to be overly smooth or overly creamy or full with a bunch of crap give Mm -hmm. me chunky skin on mashed potatoes with beef gravy don't give me any of this chicken or turkey gravy shit beef gravy lay it on top i could dump my number five pretzel roll in there okay Uh, i'm gonna aggravate you I've dated many women in my life. They don't like how picky I am with food. Is this you and I went out and ate somewhere. (laughs) You and I went out and ate somewhere. You'd be shocked at what I don't like. I am 100% anti gravy. I can't get into it. It feels, it looks, it looks like something that leaked out of a car to me. All right. So I just can't get into it. All right. Do I like to have barbecue near? the table for thanksgiving of all the sauces give me a sweet baby ray i'll dip that in any day all right but another one i love stuffing 
let's bring it up. You brought up pretzel roll. Mm -hmm. I love stuffing. I'm a fan of an apple bits. A little, a little cinnamon inside the stuffing. All right. A little okay. apple sausage uh, stuffing. Oh man, I'm on board. Outside the box. I'm not now. I'm digging it. Now I'm digging it. That's that's a unique dish. I'll have a very unique dish of my own uh, mm -hmm. coming up here uh, in the top list. I do enjoy that. Um, this one number coming in at number three. I call it the anti Matthew Judon. Uh, he he made some headlines this week where he said nasty ass noodles and cheese. That's not good. Bullshit. Mac and cheese is glorious. What? That may that may be the one thing we link up on. My no, next what, one was mac is, and cheese. My next one was mac and cheese. I was gonna say, what on God's green earth? What on God? Who hurt you that what you happened? don't like mac and cheese? I th there's there's uh, somebody who works in the Bengals media who I have a lot of respect for. She's really really good at her job. But it's like every other tweet I see is about how she she doesn't like cheese. Like she orders a three way with no cheese. I'm like, who? What's, what's a three way? <laughs> skyline uh okay spaghetti chili cincinnati chili and then you put a, a mountain of cheddar cheese on top she does a two-way noodles chili that's it who hurt you that you don't unless you're lactose intolerant who hurt you in your life that you don't like cheese same with matthew judon like what are we doing mac and cheese number three almost a must almost a must a ba especially a good baked mac and cheese with like the breadcrumbs on top and you get the Slices of cheese that are melted on there, almost like burnt on the top. Mm. You guys can tell why I'm 230 pounds. <laughs> I'm not too. I'm not too far behind you, Rick. <laughs> I'm not too. Far yeah, but you're you. way taller than I. Am. Okay, <laughs> you carry it better. Right. Most of my weight is my head. I don't know if you can tell that just by, just on camera. I wasn't going to say anything. And my head right. bigger it's a than large yours. head. God bless him, Jim Lynham, uh owner promoter of AAW. Memorial tournament in his name. First time I met him in 2007. He's like, "How does your neck support it?" Like he, like, he just said that out loud to me. How does your neck support it? Uh, I'm gonna throw this on. You were debating it. We we agree. Mac and cheese is my other one here. All right, honey ham. I will go with ham, the candy of meats. Honey ham, the candy of meats. I like that over turkey, which I find to be dry. I think it dries out. It has a we. It doesn't hold. You gotta brine it. Yeah, it, it, some people don't brine though. You know, some people can't handle the always brine. Always a mistake. Always a mistake. Uh, but I don't mind turkey in a sandwich form. There's something weird about it just by itself. I need to. I need that. I know barbecue chicken is just odd to people, but uh, barbecue turkey. I, I it's been a thing the past couple of years, and it's got me more on board with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm very picky about stuff. I'm a no sauce boy, as, as some people have called me. But, See, yeah. that's the thing. I gotta have sauce on like everything. Like if I'm making a dinner, like the other night, oh god, what was it? I was making dinner, and you know, I made I made some some cheddar cheese grits, and I had some some chicken and some andouille sausage and some broccoli, kind of like a, a mock jambalaya kind of thing. And I put it all together on a bowl for the family. I'm like, man, there is, I'm missing something here. So I went and I got a gravy packet with, and I just made like a quick little gravy and I slathered it all on top of there, and it was good stuff. I got to have a sausage. It's, you it's ruined great. it. No, you ruined it. Was, it, it was fantastic. It was great. Family loved it. Uh, my son ate it up. Uh, with his advanced taste. Oh, yeah, number two or number one? Uh, we are moving on to number two. And this is something that I pride myself on. Sweet potato casserole. I make the best. I'm not confident about much in my life, mm -hmm. but I make the best sweet potato casserole on this planet. I, I've had people whose grandmothers have been making sweet potatoes for them since they were six years old two, three, four, five, six years old who have tried my sweet potatoes and have gone, son of a bitch, that's close. God you know what I'm saying? Because you never want to you never want to go against family, against your grandma's cooking, but it's like, that's good shit. Sweet potato, sweet potato casserole is my jam. Also, to side in, sweet potato pie because it, it's a very easy transition. The recipes are very similar. Very easy transition over to sweet potato pie, which will probably be number two on my pie chart, uh, to be completely honest with you. Well, I'm going to give my number two and my number one. In one in one pick. Ooh. It's pie followed by pie. <laughs> uh I feel apple pie, which as basic as many people many people think, has a simplicity to it that is joyous. I like pumpkin pie, but it just you just kind of slide through it and the the texture throws me off. Apple pie, perfect. 
the the, the like the, the parts that are dry and crusty are crusty the part the parts that are wet and filled with sh- sweetness and sugar uh, are, are all there you know uh, I have I have all of it right there uh, and then uh, other pies that I enjoy pecan I've turned on uh, you yeah. couldn't get a little Kevin to eat a pecan to save his life oh I was now, same way, same way. I, I've I've gone into the nuts thing. The pandemic, my my appetite changed. I was got that? really into like just having nuts around. Now what? pecan. I had a slice of pecan pie for the first time in like ten years recently. I was like, I'm gonna have this at Thanksgiving. I mean, I'm gonna buy pecan pie. Also, uh, uh, you ever make uh mud buddies? You know, you know, like those little those little like like you get the checks mix and you yeah 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 you know, call it like uh, puppy chow puppy right? chow like, yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, there's now puppy chow pies. What you do, puppy chow pies, and you do them on top of like vanilla or Rocky Road ice cream. Now we're talking ice cream pies, okay? So I was saying regular hot oven pie. Now I'm talking ice cream pie. Mm. Now I'm talking Baskin Robbins. Get yourself in this game. You're leaving some money on the table. All right. You're 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 talking about develop type two type pie here. <laughs> well, I'm talking type three. Type I'm on type three diabetes. <laughs> I got that. I got that new 3.0. I got it's that new diabetes. <laughs> Diabetes. You guys want to try some of this diabetes? <laughs> Another slice All right. of diabetes. All right. We hope you're eating well. You got more to talk about here. What food do you want to wrap them up with? So you said apple pie is your number one, and that's weird because it's got me thinking. I don't think apple pie would make my top five pie list, to be completely honest with you. It's ridiculous. What are you talking about? Because it would go pumpkin, sweet potato, 1A, 1B. Then it would go pecan, probably a banana cream pie. Banana cream pie is BS. Oh, screw you. It's fluff. Fantastic. God, I'm not thinking it's got to be changed. Texture, dude. I need something I can I can grip my teeth on. Uh, apple pie would be way down there for me. It's overrated. Um, number one for me, hands down, and this is something that me and my brother have almost come to blows on before, as Kevin almost drops the light. Uh <laughs> good catch, by the way. Um <clears throat> me and my brother have almost come to blows on taking the leftovers home mm. from mom's. It is a stuffing dish, but it is not your traditional stovetop topping uh, stuffing dish. It which is, is which is awesome. I don't know why people don't have more stuffing around the year. I don't I'm, know why it's honest, so. It, it would be number six. It would be number six on my list. Um, it's pineapple stuffing. Ooh, it's pineapple okay. condensed milk, white bread, few other uh, secret ingredients mixed in. Yeah. Bake it up. Uh huh. Oh God, it goes great with your uh, with your honey ham. Mm-hmm. I will take that stuff. I'm serious. I, I, my traditional Black Friday breakfast, two over easy eggs, side of ham, pineapple stuffing. It mm-hmm. is, oh, such good eats, such good eats. My mom passed the recipe down to me, so now I can make it anytime I want. I, don't, I traditionally don't. It just feels like a Thanksgiving, Christmas, maybe Easter dish, you know, but. Some people are going to be looking at me like I got two heads because there's these monsters out here who are anti-pineapple. Guess what? I put pineapple on pizza too, bitch. But pineapple stuffing, number one, got to have it. It is the I, I will fight my brother for the spoon to get the first. Got to make sure I got the right spot. What, what really looks good in the pan, the perfect spot. Big ass scoop, throw it down on my plate, and then the rest is arbitrary at that point. It's pineapple stuffing badass dude i'm looking forward to tomorrow by the time this airs i'm going to be full on everything i just said and more <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here let's get you something to eat and let's get our conversation going with silas young he will be in action with aaw windy city classic that'll air tomorrow friday november 26 on fight tv pretty affordable 13 bucks for this show watch it anywhere in the world a uh, ticket still available for the live show at 115 bourbon street and the south suburbs of chicago well worth it if you're making your way through the midwest maybe you're gonna you know do something different this weekend maybe you're in the midwest states this is a show you should travel out for it's a really really stacked show ton of talent from impact ton of talent from aew on this show get the full card and tickets at aawpro.com let's hear what's going on with silas young play <laughs> gotta love life here i'm gonna i'm gonna re-add this to the mix here you gotta love technology because we do this in like one live take well i think uh, you, had, you had the tracker going i think that i had the tracker going that's what when the is. tracker goes and then the video goes at the mm-hmm. same time it bogs down it did that it's been we... sitting there for a while too usually yeah, it's ready. he is the last real man in professional well, wrestling silas young has been at it for what almost two decades now and he is 
earning the title. He will be in action with AAW, Windy City Classic, live on Fight TV pay-per-view this Friday, November 26th. Of course, you can get your tickets at aawpro.com. A man who has his banner up in the AAW arena. People thought, oh, well, your banner's up. They're not going to see you again. But then you showed up out of nowhere at our most recent show, Hell Half No Fury. Silas, you're back in AAW. Obviously, some things have changed uh, at the other promotion you've been with for quite some time. Things are changing at WWE, and you're still in the mix. How does it feel to have this consistency, that that title, The Last Real Man? It's never, it's never shook from you, has it? No, it really hasn't. You know, I, uh, you know, wrestling's my life. You know, you said it. I've been doing it almost twenty years. As a matter of fact, uh, come March will be my twentieth year of wrestling. So, uh, you know, it's I've put so much of my life into this. There's, you know, there's really no turning back or doing anything else. It's, it's what I love. It's what my life has been built around, and it's it's going to keep going for a lot longer yet. We'll talk about the big match coming up here this Friday, but there's been a lot of changes in the last two years, obviously with the pandemic and everything like that, but the wrestling business in general. Uh, people knew you uh, for the last years from Ring of Honor. You had some time with WWE as well, uh, but a lot of talent is out of WWE. A lot of talent is out of Ring of Honor, and you're known for doing some great things with AAW, one of the top independents in the country. How many top names are kind of hitting the independents again in the next few months here. And are there any of those names that you're like, Ooh, I'd like to, I'd like to get in there and maybe stretch that guy or put some <laughs> lumps on him. Is there anyone out there? You're thinking like some fresh meat in the market again here. Uh, you know what, honestly, uh, I've always just been a fan of getting to work with different people. You know, mm -hmm. you can, uh, wrestling, you can, you can end up working with a lot of the same guys a lot of times, or, you know, you might end up being on shows with guys a lot and never get the chance to work with them. So really, uh, anybody there's so much good talent uh available on the independent scene that I, I'm, I'm really just looking forward to to get in the ring with with a lot of guys that i haven't had the opportunity to yet so you know coming back and you know starting to do independent shows again after five or six years there's a lot of fresh talent out there to work with is it refreshing for you because you did the wwe thing you did ring of honor it's a different challenge it's televised right there's so there's different time cues and stuff like that how big is the difference between doing televised wrestling where there is time constraints to independent wrestling where there's some but there, there's a lot more freedom right uh, absolutely i mean i'd love the I, I love the independent shows more you you, you get the you get this opportunity to go out there and really show what you're capable of doing. Sure, maybe you might have uh, time cues or something like that, but it's a it's a little bit more leniency. Uh, you know, actually, with the last two years with the whole COVID shutdown and, and barely working at all, uh, I was really wanting to get back and start doing independence in general. So now it's uh, you know it's with the situation being that it is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting that opportunity and I'm excited about it. You, uh, AAW as a brand is established. Some people talk about it in the same breath as they do at GCW or a PWG. One of those independents that truly got things going for a ring of honor for many stars that we see now in WWE. And you are a critical part of that. And now you're back in the mix and there's some new names there specifically one that you got tangled with a guy who's on the shelf right now with a, a beat up leg Mance Warner, but his crew, their brand, the second gear crew is all over AAW and you get in the ring this Friday with a guy who's very young a guy. I saw walk away from taking a death Valley driver off a cherry picker 15 feet in the ring. And he just rolled with it. Uh, he is Manders. How do you feel about this guy? How do you feel about the second gear crew? And you nearly got into it with Mance Warner before this whole thing went. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I actually, uh, I knew Manders. I had been running uh, some independent shows myself up in the Milwaukee area, a little company called MKE Wrestling. And uh, Manders is one of the guys that uh, I, I tried to book on my shows as often as possible. You know, he's got... Uh, He's got he's got a great look. He's great in the ring. Uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to uh, you know getting the ring. He's one of those guys that I was talking about that uh, you know I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to ever really work with. So I'm I'm excited about that. You know I've heard a lot of really good things. Seen a lot of good things about Mance Warner. Uh, you know when his when his leg heals up, I'm I'm sure me and him will have a, a go at it. So I'm I'm excited, man. I'm I'm excited to for all these new matchups and, you know, and you talked about AAW being one of the top independents. It definitely is, you know, it's, uh, it's a place that 
you know, years back, it gave me the opportunity to work with a lot of really, really good talent that I may not have been able to work with other places. So, you know, uh, coming, coming back to AAW is a, it, it's a good feather in the hat and it's, it's nothing but opportunity every month. Absolutely. And of course it'll be on pay-per-view fight TV. Go ahead and get it there. Order online, get your tickets. If you're in the Midwestern area, if you're making your way through Chicago, this is worth the trip. This is worth the trip. 115 bourbon street, get your tickets at aawpro.com. Uh, I do want to talk about this. You've been in the ring with so many people that have, uh, have been in WrestleMania. They've done all these amazing things. And, and I know we're talking about manners, but I have to talk about this match. It's one of the best matches I've ever seen live. And it's over 10 years ago. This guy that people know as Brian Danielson, and you tangled with him in a, a, at a VFW hall called the Bruin Eagles Club, the classic home of the world famous Bruin Eagles Club, which seats less than two, three hundred people. And you may as well thought we were in a, a stadium. And I've seen him wrestle in a stadium, but I'll never forget that match. He had his theme song that the crowd sang. You have your theme song that the crowd sang. It was an electric, electric atmosphere. People can check it out on AAW on demand and our on-demand library uh describe that night and describe how how much of a masterpiece you were able to create there with danielson yeah you know what i remember uh seeing that he was going to be coming in and and, and sending a message to you know the the aaw office i guess so to speak and saying hey i really want to work with brian and uh you know got a message back that said well that's the idea uh, you know, that was something I was extremely, extremely excited for. And, you know, like you said, the the uh, the energy in that room, that's I mean, that's what uh, us as wrestlers do it for. You know, we feed off of those fans energy and they and they feed off of us. And it was uh, I mean, it was just an amazing experience. And, you know, it's it's one of those matches that you want to be able to have every weekend. Absolutely. It's a classic. Go check it out. So you said coming up nearly 20 years in the business. And you've been all, all around the world, won titles, done some amazing things, been on international television. What else do you want to prove to people right now? Because you've proved a lot already. Is there a goal? Is there something you're thinking like, I'm looking at this and this is something I really, really want to do? Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, you know, with I, th I think this is kind of a combination of, uh, you know, being exclusive to Ring of Honor for uh, five or six years and then things slowing down. Uh, I just want to, I want to be able to get back out there and work. You know, I, I, I feel like I've always had a good reputation of someone who's always, uh, you know, consistently put on great matches, uh, a guy that you can know can go out there and wrestle 60 minutes if need be. So, I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to coming back. I'm looking forward to working hard. I'm looking forward to having these, these great hard hitting uh, back and forth matches of, uh, you know, just really leaving it all in the ring. And, you know, I'm, I'm 41 years old and, you know, I realize that, you know, it's not old for wrestling, but it's also not young, you know, wrestling typically ends up being a, a younger man's game. A lot of guys in their twenties or early thirties, but you know, my body feels great. Uh, I know that after 20 years, a lot of guys feel beat up. They maybe have knee problems or a shoulder or a hip or something, but my body, you know, knock on wood feels great so i i, I just want to i want to go out there i want to prove uh that you know i can go with anybody you know uh i, I, I want to you know really take this this next year 2022 you know things are picking back up uh i want to work as much as possible and i just i want to show i want to show the fans of the wrestling world that you know the last real man isn't just a gimmick that uh you know it's it's a way of life where did that come from where did you come upon that idea, that moniker and that persona? So, uh, you know, for years I was just Silas Young. I was a guy with long hair and a beard. And, um, I, you know, I'd been doing that for about 10, 10 11 years at the time. And uh, I, I just had some other opportunities coming up. And I kind of thought, you know, there's there's a lot of good good wrestlers out there that are just a guy with a first name and a last name, but no really uh, distinctive character, so to speak. You know, I kind of started thinking about like, like my father was a huge inspiration for this. You know, my dad, uh, he was a firefighter. He served in uh, the Navy. Uh, you know, he raised six boys. He's a real, he's a real like man's man, hard ass, you know, kind of take no crap type of guy. And uh, he always had this, the slick back hair and the mustache. So that was kind of where that came from. And then I think just at the time with uh, 
just where society was at, you know, like, you know, this is yeah, about 10 years ago almost now, you know, things like skinny jeans were first coming out. The way you, you know. say skinny jeans, skinny jeans. <laughs> uh, which is funny because I, I probably wear tight jeans too nowadays. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, guys were like getting pedicures and stuff like there was the term metrosexual. Sure. Uh, so I just kind of started looking at like, you know, how society was. And uh, I mean, I might have even heard it on a TV show or a movie somewhere about how like men nowadays are not like our fathers or our father's fathers. And that was kind of just the the inspiration for it was kind of a multifaceted thing with my father and then just with, uh, I guess, society and how men are nowadays. I'm not too far from your age, so I can see it. Uh, but it's the perfect anti-millennial, like late millennial type thing to do to say like, well, these people are a couple of years younger. They don't have it. They don't got right. it. You yeah, know? Absolutely. And, and now you've almost, for lack of a better phrase, you've grown into that persona. That is, that is, this isn't a gimmick. You're not too far away from that person in the eyes of some people. I've heard it in the locker room. Some people saying you're coming back and, right, and here you are right back in the top spot. Uh, and you've kind of thrown off the pecking order at AEW. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean that that's that's what wrestling is, you know. You uh you don't always get things handed to you, but sometimes uh, you know, when you've went out and you've worked your ass off for for years in and years out and, and been consistent as a, a, a performer, then you know, you maybe get some opportunities that not every not everybody else is gonna get right away, but maybe it's because they haven't earned those opportunities yet. Throw on your skinny jeans, all right. We're going down to one fifteen Bourbon Street. It is going to be the Windy City Classic, the premier independent wrestling show this month. You're not going to want to miss it. Get it on Fight TV. Get your tickets at aawpro.com. Silas, if you want to follow you, maybe get some of your merch, where do they go? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at LastRealManROH. You can uh, find uh, ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Silas Young for uh, a wide selection of T-shirts. And, yeah, you know, come out, show your support. It's going to be a hell of a fight. Mander, Silas Young, this Friday on Fight TV with AAW. Thanks for the time, Silas. Yeah, thank you for having me on. <laughs> my mic is muted that's what happens uh don't forget to hit that like button don't forget to share like and subscribe all the internet stuff most of all have a great holiday weekend and we'll be back monday remember enjoy wrestling